Oh, three dots. Oh, Got it. All right, we're good. Here. Some you somewhere. I mean, not you. Something showed up about you somewhere. Okay. She was a woman about time. Of course, it was good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, one public comment. Okay, hearing none, we go to treasurer's report. What? You always, you always, oh, God, you always look at Carolyn. <laughs> and you're looking oh, like, man. no, like, why? What did I do wrong? Sorry the, about that. Uh, the finance committee recommended that you approve the um, payment of the bills. And I don't have the exact amount in front of me. It's 60000 Would you like me to read it for you? Yes, please. Because I, I wrote it down for, for my minutes taking. Um, it's uh, expenditures of $60,000 in. $60,056.39. So I so move. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, next, consent agenda. So in this month's consent agenda, we have approval of the minutes uh, from January 9th. And we have the outre Outreach Committee report. Now I'm going to look in for <laughs> Sorry. That's so bad. So I'm just going to make sure. So these are the two items that are in the consent agenda. I will make the motion that we approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? Yes. I have yes. a question. Is that all that's in the consent agenda? This month, yes. The minutes aren't in there? I said minutes. Yes. And minutes I said Outreach Committee. Outreach. Yes. Um, I would like to make a very minor correction to okay. Kirsten's initials, who I gave the last name of Z, last initial of Z, <laughs> for um, category 6BI. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so with those, that correction, is there any other comments on the other items? In that case, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> All right, up to the regular agenda. Let's get into yeah. Lutzenberg. <laughs> oh. um, okay, we put uh, obviously Lutzenberg at the top here. Um, today I received a letter from our insurance carrier, Hanover, um, that uh, they are rejecting our claim for the repairs and the roof at uh, the Lansingburg branch. Um, giving the reason that um, the wear and tear and deterioration of the roof caused the leak. Um, in my opinion, I don't think that's correct. Um, I, I actually haven't the, been on that roof after yeah. you did. I also agree with that. The storm on or December 17th was torrential rains. It was probably 40 to 50 mile an hour gusts of wind. I think that was the cause of the problem. Um, I have, uh, so far, I'm uh, going to be checking with our roofing people uh, to kind of get a feel for this. Um, and uh, we're going to, I'm think we should prepare some sort of response here. Um, what this means is fairly dramatic um, for us. The mitigation work was already completed, or has been completed, to the tune of approximately 92,000. Wow. Jesus. Yeah. The restoration work is estimated at 84,000 right now. So you're looking at 176,000 for that portion of the building. Um, in addition to the repairs to the roof we've already done, which is roughly 10,000. Um, that does not include, of course, a new roof. 
Uh, I've got a couple of other ideas on approaching the the issue at this point, other than to protest. Do, yeah, um, do we have any option to appeal that with Hanover? Yeah. Okay. Um, don't forget, however, the problem with appeal is this is going to take serious amount of time. Yeah. In which case the branch is closed. Yes. So you have to kind of, you know, <laughs> realize that. Um, then we may get some pushback on that. I um, talked to Tim at Upper Hudson today about the possibility of repurposing a main library roof grant, which we already have the money for. It's been approved and we've been paid um, to help us out with the Lansing Burn issue. Initially, I had thought of, um, you know, transfer that roof to their roof, but um, I hadn't had all of the um, costs for the mitigation and the restoration in front of me, which I do now. Um, basically, if you combine those two jobs, it comes out to pretty close to what the grant for the main library roof was, which was 198,000. Um, two jobs? Yeah, the mm -hmm. Could you, that, which you say, the, it's out of those two jobs, which the, the mitigation and the restoration. Thank you. Yeah. 92 and, and uh, 84. Yeah. So could I just ask yes. by mitigation, is that the roof work and no. rest, restoration is the? No. Okay. <laughs> can, can... When they went in, uh, remember, there's an inch of water all over the floor in that section of the building. Mitigation involves basically gutting that whole area because you can't let water sit or you're going to get mold. Mm -hmm. Carpet went out, two, set, two levels of floor went out. Um, the south wall went out um, and part of the ceiling. So that's a mitigation. Also, what that? So that's a mitigation. Yeah, that's all part of the mitigation. Okay. Then they took out all of the shelving, all of the materials, everything. That room right now is completely empty. Um, they probably set dryers and ventilation as yeah. well. That's yeah. what you call a quick response and professional fire restoration to do mm -hmm. the mitigation. Yeah, that's mitigation work. That's already been done. So we're on the hook for that anyway. One way or the other. And that's about 100,000? 92,000. Okay. And then the restoration? 84,000. And that would be restoring that area back to yeah. the way yeah, it was or better? That brings it back to where it was. That's uh, about another 100,000. What's that? That's about another 100,000. Yeah, to do exactly. And then there's the roof. Well, Yes, now the roof has been repaired. Um, and this is another part of the the puzzle. Is the roof repair, is that part of the mitigation or part of the restoration? For a separate expense? This has been done as part of the roof repair. Okay, so, it's so that's not, that's that. sorry, that's not factored into mitigation no. or no. restoration. No. Okay. No. It's, and it's that's already paid yet. for separately already. Yeah. Okay. That's about 10000 we need to pay for. Yeah. We have paid or have not paid for it. We have not. So okay. that's in addition to the numbers you talked about okay. previously. So the three are 136000 work. That's coming up work. 186000 yeah. total. Yeah. See, that gives you 186000 yeah. So that's pretty close to 198000 that we had for the uh, re-roofing here at the main library. Mm -hmm. And that ground, as I said, it's already completed. We already have the funding. Um, it's not unusual to request a repurpose, but it's a kind of elaborate and very possibly can be rejected. Um, so it's entirely yeah. up to DLD, and then it goes to DASNI, and it's also up to them. Consider we just ask them to repurpose using the window for HVAC. Yeah. Does that make it... A have, I don't know if anyone's had that experience of doing two requests 
the one library. <laughs> I don't know. Is that ever? <laughs> well, and also, also, do we need the roof repaired so we can do the HVAC? I mean, isn't it? Isn't it like a critical path thing? No, no, that's no? not required to do the HVAC. And there will be some roofing work that's included as part of the HVAC work, but that is that so, under their own. That's not the complete redoing of the roof. So it wouldn't prevent that from going ahead then. No. Okay. No, but we're. What's the cycle for work on the roof? Because we could always do that as another. Construction yeah. grant. Yeah, we're starting West, the next year. Want to lose sight of that. We're starting yeah. next year's cycle, so you can re reapply for the main library's roof for the next year's cycle. It's a good, um, it's a good public library construction grant project because it gets approved. Mm -hmm. Okay, couple of things. One, while we had hoped to possibly use it differently later in the year. We did in the current budget put up ten thousand for contingency funds for buildings. I think this is one of those contingencies. <laughs> it takes a percentage. Of I mean, I guess my only concern with that is it's I because I, I agree with you, but it's still it's only February. Yeah, so. uh, <laughs> it's pretty small potatoes compared to yeah. Yeah, but it's well, at least what needs to be paid for. So, at yeah. least it's a start. A good faith effort. The other, the phone call I got during finance, I had made an inquiry of one of my friends, one of the deputy coordinators at Public Safety Bureau for Rensselaer County, and he's not aware of the county putting together any request for disaster aid for that storm. He did suggest that I talk to the bureau director tomorrow. Actually, I'll talk to him Thursday because tomorrow is Valentine's Day and working. If okay. that's okay with you guys, I, I'll make that inquiry to find out if there's something under the radar that the county has requested okay. funds for municipal costs from that store. Agreed. And if that were the case, that is what, could support I'm, I'm lost. the case with the insurance <laughs> company, too. Uh, I'm, I'm lost. Who you yeah. request for? Rensselaer County, Bureau of Public Safety. Well, I mean, it would be the conduit for municipalities putting together claims if the if there was a disaster declaration. That might even come from the state or the feds at a higher level, but it's was, worth it's worth disaster? it's worth the shot in the dark to, to for me to get a hold of Jay Wilson tomorrow on Thursday and ask him, do you guys have anything going on or do you know of anything else? Wouldn't, I'm sorry, uh, wouldn't the county executive had to have declared an emergency to do that, if I'm remembering my procedure correctly? Not necessarily. Okay. Very often that happens, but there's other mitigation pathways, okay. money for mitigation from storms, that kind of, there's other pathways. So it's, worth, it's probably worth me having that conversation with Jay or one of my old CMO, CMO buddies. I don't think it hurts that. Point. Definitely can't hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, yeah. it should be me talking to Jay since we got 40 years in the ditch together. Okay. Anyone have any problem with that? That's, All right, go I mean, for we it. We need money, so it's worth it. The third part of it is, as part of our appeal, that we got a wire in our, within our attorney. I think the attorney and one of the things that either they do or we do is at some point as part of the appeal chase down the wet weather records to prove to show how, that how this was an unusual event. Yeah, you can find matter of fact I have a report on the weather that day. <laughs> it's a uh, you know, all you got to do is Google it, <laughs> and it comes back. Um, torrential rain and high wind. Um, I think there's a couple other things um, that I had to say before we go too far. Um, as I said, um, I do have a call in about applying for the, um, or applying for to repurpose that one brand for the roof. Um, that I would need some kind of approval to go ahead with. Um, 
from the board. Okay. Uh, you're asking somebody to. Kristen, can I actually yeah. ask your opinion on yeah, I, I how know. long we could possibly defer the maintenance that needs to happen on this My roof? understanding is that the roof up there is not currently leaking, that we were sort of being proactive and sort of looking at replacing that roof. Well, we did widespread repairs on that roof about two years ago. Right. Yeah. So okay. I, I think that sounds like a reasonable plan, but I wouldn't say, oh, let's not look at it again. I think we do need to look at it again. The other piece that I think we've talked about is that we've been holding up the cornice work to be done in conjunction with the roof work. Right. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that would I don't obviously know delayed. that you know, if we were to delay the main roof work by a year, I don't know that I would recommend delaying the cornice work by a year. We're going to end up having to do a little bit of roof work just for the cornice work and incidental to the HVAC. Right. And we were being proactive. We we're trying to do it the right way, but now we got a bigger problem. <laughs> If some of that roof work had to be done for the cornice, would it have to be redone again when we are doing the entirety in order to do the HVAC system? They, yeah, I would say that uh, probably they would re-tie it in, yes. But I'm not sure that the amount of roofing work that's part of the cornice project would be significant in the scope of the larger project. I would say okay. it might be 2 or 3% perhaps of the larger project. I mean, that's still substantial. It just yes, it's not negligible. But I don't think it's my personal opinion. I don't think it's uh, uh, would be uh, a waste to to do that again when we do the entire roof. Keeping in mind, we are on the hook for ninety two thousand right now. Yeah, so I. I would support uh, doing the asking if we can shift those funds from this building, the Lansingburg building, okay. uh, in this current situation, and then looking for additional funds then to do the roof on this building uh, within the next year or two. Okay, it, it, it's not going to hold. Consider the timeline of putting in the HVAC again. Is you don't see it halting it. No, it. no. In okay. fact, I, and I would also not uh, hold up the corners work either. Okay. Yeah, we might not be able to, depending on our timeline for that one. And our funding for that as well. Yeah, exactly. I got another question. The original source of the funds that we bought the treasury bills. What was that original source? What was that money for? That was a bequest. Unrestricted. Yeah. Um, I remember correctly. It, it was it, no that there weren't it's any restrictions. Something to do with that's my point. <laughs> is it? Sorry, what is this in reference to? The treasury. We've bills. got treasury bills coming due. Okay. And rather than roll over treasury bills this time, we're already on the hook for ninety-two. So we might have to. Are we on the hook for one hundred and two? Because there's the ten k of the roof repair yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Well, I'm looking make a point. Yeah. How much are those T bills value then? Like about 196 seven. Is that 196 the treasury bill? I thought it was 203, but that's yeah, it's over no, 200. Well, that, that may be. The original request was about 196. It's 196. Uh, right, but it what we have now is 200. Or, or, when is that? When is that? I don't know. It comes to, I think, in a week. She's going, but remember, you buy on a discount, so you buy 196000 to get over 200 back. Okay. What's the question? Yeah, somebody... what's uh, the um, T-bills? Yeah. The T-bills? -bill I'm sorry, Paul, I can't hear that part. Isn't it 206000 I um, It's in the packet that you have. Let's see. Oh. Um, Believe okay. 202. Yeah, let's say one two, four. We, we, we purchased it at 202. Um we bought it at 204. Oh, I see. you like the breakdown there of how much we have. 
Yeah, that was up to two hundred and six thousand in that report that I. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't have that. Um, handy. Yeah, it was up to that as of today. <laughs> Um, okay, there's another complication there with the repurposing of that uh, public library construction grant. I um, have talked to Assemblyman, uh, Assemblyperson John McDonald about a SAM grant, possibility of a SAM grant. Which is? Um, and I talked to him. Uh, actually, I met him in the hall. Um, Can you clarify what that is? That state, grant? Sorry, state municipal. Right? What? What is it? Grant. Grant. Oh, it's a um, municipal. Um, damn. Yeah, it's. Um, can't remember. Anyway, it's municipal improvement stuff. Um, they're uh, state funds. Is it state assistance for municipalities? Is that what it stands for? Well, I think that sounds right. I forget, what the, I forget what the F is, unless you know. I think <laughs> maybe state. Yeah, you want that up? Something or other. Municipality. Um, anyway, I, I, I was able to speak to him in the hallway, so we had quite a long conversation. But um, my conversation was about the HVAC system and the need uh, that we have there. And so he set up a meeting that I will be at uh, on um, Friday the 23rd. Oh, really? Hmm. Um, for discussing the, the issue. And uh, of course, the whole issue has changed. Um, and I think that uh, I would uh, ask him a possibility and the timing on that sort of a thing. One minor problem is that <clears throat> the public library construction grant program prevents you from using SAM funds for the same project. So I don't know how this is going to come together. I mean, I think I should pursue them both, but I'm sorry, I, I didn't quite understand that last caveat there. It prevents one of the public libraries from using SAM funds for the same project. What do you mean by the same project as what? I assume double dipping, right? Like well, if we wanted to try to get money yeah, from they would probably say that. SAM and I guess if you but if we use just SAM, we could use just SAM. Yeah. Well the project is okay, when we apply, we apply for a particular project. The roof or yeah, yeah, you know yeah, the reconstruction yeah. or something. It prevents you from using SAM funds for that same project, which so, sense. so I guess you're, you're saying it prevents us from using for the HVAC project because we have an ongoing HVAC project we already have got. Yeah, you give them assurances that you won't or don't aren't using SAM funds for that project. Okay, so it, well, is it, is it just construction or is it any other funds? For example, ARPA funds or DRI funds? Yeah. No, it, do, it doesn't. It doesn't worry about those. Just SAM funds, because SAM it's, funds and, and it's a, yeah, yeah, it's a with state, other state grant, funds. and so is the public library construction. Okay, so, so yeah. ARPA and both DRI, and, but if we switch over, so no, it doesn't involve federal funds or anything else for that matter. But if we're switching the HVAC. We're not talking about switching the HVAC. Well, some of the windows monies. So the window money, okay. That's well, that I have to cover later. That's <laughs> construction funding. So point, then it does go to. At some point, instead of talking about mm -hmm. this, we actually are going to have to draw this out on an easel or a black one I'm, or something. I'm trying to draw it out myself right now. <laughs> so, Paul, are you saying you're going to talk to John McDonald about? The HVAC, or now you're going to change your conversation to have it be about Lansenburg? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well it there's depends. a great deal of need here. <laughs> also, there and what the conversation yeah. would be, yes, yeah. we have a need of uh, about $186,000 right now, you know, to finish the Lansenburg project. Okay. 
Well, that's, um, not necessarily to finish, that's to do the short term fixes. Yeah, that, that's, right. that's not. Right. Let's finished. just bring it back to the state it was in. Yeah. Don't yeah. give us a new roof. Right. Um, but, you know, timing is part of this. If they're saying that it's like a year out, I don't think it's a good bet because I think that the public library construction plan, if we repurpose, all I need is they're okay because I've already got the money. Okay. So that might be much quicker. And I'm sorry, the, the order of magnitude are the same grants. I, I don't know. Well, How right. much could we possibly get for from Sam? Well, Do you we, know? We had a Sam grant for the um, uh, west side of the building, which we did a couple of years ago for over two hundred thousand. Okay, so it's within the scope of what's yeah potential. Oh yes. yeah. Okay. Oh no, it's not small potato. So I, I think I heard that it sounds like we had potentially three options. One would be a sand grant. One would be repurposing the grant from the roof here to be a roof there, and the third option could be our yeah. T yeah. notes or T bills that are coming due mm -hmm. in. A week or so. So I think is that the three options that are available. Yeah. Pretty Could we much. be doing an appeal at the same time? Just... Well, no, it's not the only options. You can close the branch. Uh, yes, I, I don't. I don't think we should understand that option yet. Yeah, that'd be okay. very popular. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just saying, yeah, it's a, you know, I mean, it's it's obviously an option, but and, like, we're and, not and there. I, mean, that we can... I didn't think so. That's why I had the mitigation fund. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the T bill isn't a, really a great option either no oh, yeah well I, and I, I i i couch all these options as options in the goal and intent that we would do an appeal with the insurance company and the insurance company would live up to their mm -hmm. obligations obligations <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but the fact that and it then, could get delayed out and that we need to move forward with some of this work that's already been completed well yeah. another question how, and I don't know the answer to this, so I got to defer to people who have been here longer. How long can we reasonably be out of the burn before we have a real problem? Well, what do you define as like a real problem? Because yeah. like I, I hear people asking me about it almost every day. Yeah. When well, it's I real. say like, it's closed yeah. for a year in 2009, okay. and it was a it it took a lot of work to bring that back. Yeah. you know, to get people to come back. They, I mean, was even reason? now you're. Yeah. Pardon? What was the reason for closing them? That, was, that was the. That's when they did away with the sequence. Right? That's, we it have, was the year where we had the budget. Gotcha. Do we have two more months? Do we have half to the summer? What do we, what do we, <laughs> do we have here to get it back open? How much time? And certainly. I don't think anyone can really like answer that. Like, I don't know what the. I'm not sure what the question is. <laughs> I mean, um, I think even just from a staffing, like they're. It's tight here, just on like we're thinking about staff. Because I'm like, also thinking of trying to find for the repairs to bring it back. You know, the, we've already paid mitigation, we've already paid roof repair. But the, we, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't pay any of them. We haven't paid yeah, anything. We've already <laughs> we, we paid something. We don't we don't paid something. Uh, well, we $10,000 uh, Yeah, we did pay the yeah. roof okay. as of now. Paid. We haven't uh, said that yet. very fine. <laughs> would it be worth okay. pursuing through the various trade education programs as well as the CBs to get some work done? Like going to the HVCC and HVCC like as part of their curriculum or possibly through union training, apprenticeship training, or, you know, my treatment. I remember an old firehouse, but the CBs for practice. We needed a roof. The CBs put the roof on. We bought the shingles and they put the roof on. Would it be worth exploring that here? And would we have the time to do it? Or are we in too tight a timeline? Do you know anybody? I think it's a real question of the timeline. I don't I, I personally don't know any roofing unions. <laughs> yeah. Surprisingly. And, and when I've looked at putting on roofs, they always said that the most important thing was the skill. Yeah. Oh, uh, for, this would for, be the roof. This would be. We don't be doing interior work. Is that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, this would be doing the interior. And I, if I heard correctly, I think 
the demolition work's been done, stabilization is done, the roof is done. So really, the only work that's left to do is the interior right. fit up again. So I think what I heard. Yeah. Right. So did I, they? I have sorry. A... About just about just off that, they tore out the subfloor. Did they reinstall a subfloor in Lansingburg? Did they reinstall a subfloor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's just no finished floor. Right. Okay. So my question follows that. Could Lansing Bird being open without that particular area? Oh, I feel like that's it's half well, the space. Yeah, that's that's like a well, huge portion was, of the space. Okay, that's what the ledger was for a long yeah. time. Was that space? So I, mean, I think still, it's, it, it, I, I don't I don't think it's a silly suggestion. You know, I think yeah. silly would be the wrong word, but I don't think it's a bad suggestion because you're losing people. Every day we can't just pick up the books. Yeah. You know, just be open enough that you can drop your books off and you can pick your books off. And so it would work work be done while it's open or it just would be well um, right now there's a big sheet up there. So there yeah. is this is the, this is the size of the area. Yeah. Which floor is that? That's first floor, first first floor. Floor. So is this is this the the ramp back ramp here? Yeah. Just so I know what I'm looking at. So it's may I say the, something? Mm. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes, you may. Yes, Lori. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to point out that having the, the branch library open with that area closed uh, would also preclude us from loaning out any uh, children's materials because all of our children's materials currently are in storage. It's gone. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's gone? It, well, it's since it's in storage. storage. We'd have to yeah. find somewhere to put it, I imagine. No, but I mean, it, it's it's Just not right a, it's not an unreasonable question. Could we rearrange things on a short term basis to occupy the building in a code compliant and safe manner to provide mm -hmm. limited services for a period of time until we can get back to full operation there? Um, that may not be not a, may not be a bad thing to explore and understand better. Um, Otherwise, we're out from probably what the mid I mean, six months at least. versus we're now we're dead in the water. Yeah. Get, getting something there while we because even if we had a fairy godmother walk in right now and put the money on the table to do all this, just organizing the contractors is going to be a couple of months. Yeah. So we we may have to look at. How do we win? But you were well, saying they, they told me quick response told me they can do the restoration in three weeks. And we've got a contract in place. So we're ready yeah. to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so we're not looking for anybody. It's just looking for the money. Long time. So. It's just a matter of uh, yeah, the money. I'm hesitant to say this because it's just something I've been told, and until I get through these numbers, there might be an angel or angels out there too. That might be interested in helping out. One hundred eighty to, to the tune of what? Yeah, <laughs> that I don't know. But I, the question was there about how much. It, I don't know. Well, That's why I was very hesitant in saying something. But there are people out there that want to help. Grand, you know, pretty far. There is a little bit of money around. The friends raised what? Yes, five thousand or something. They more. Over, they've raised over ten thousand dollars. The friends raised eight thousand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't have up to date figures, but yeah. So they're they're you know. I think uh, they were, you know, planning on, they would plan on probably a bigger campaign at this point. But. And the city had offered up to 20,000. I, I yeah, feel you it can. around I in mean, numbers, so 19,000, something or other. You could get that high, maybe, and maybe a large gift as well, you know, if you're making a lot of noise. It could be 30,000, you know. We've raised that in fundraising before. Um, I don't recommend that, I'm sorry, we do the internal work with uh, not professional people. Um, I think, you know, it really yeah. needs to be done correctly. It's a historic building, too. I think like we wouldn't have them do it here. So. Plus, you look at the water damage, you know, I mean, going forward, uh, we want them to make sure that, uh, you know, there's not extra water laying around somewhere in there. Right. Uh, I really think we need to do it professionally. 
Well, and then somebody's responsible. Well, you know, they yeah. take the liability. Right. For it. There's a liability there. Agreed. I'm also just curious if if you, we did open up the branch and had like the sheet, you know, what is the safety concern there? And it, is it, it right? I mean, if the building inspector would come in and review it and confirm oh, okay. that. Does it want to be up to the staff yeah. to keep an eye on the sheet? Like, <laughs> We need, well, it's not a slushy. I mean, I need to have a slushy. I know. I know. Like, <laughs> but just, I'm thinking like a kid. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> like getting it edgewise. Uh, we had uh, a visitor in the sex, <laughs> and we don't treat staff as visitors, though. This is Christian Jabot, who is our new head of reference, uh, adult services. Did you want to add something to it? I didn't want to add something, but the reason I came in was Paul and I talked and thought it'd be a great idea for me to introduce myself. Yeah, it's always, so if yeah. you're in the library, you know, come and say hi. I can answer any questions you have, help you find stuff. You don't know where to find it, whatever. But, um, <laughs> this is my fourth week, the beginning of my fourth week, so put you a little bit. And I'd like to say I, I found the thing, events that you did when you were the director at the Cousins Library. I found them very interesting. I thought you had some nice well, ideas there. Yeah, we started uh, showing some films for uh, Black History Month because mm -hmm. we have a film license. And in March, we're going to highlight a film literacy program. We're going to start with film noir and then work into movie musical, do comic books to superheroes, you know, fun oh, stuff. Oh, that sounds right in my alley. <laughs> there you go. Come on in, you know, get the newsletter and figure out what's going on. But yeah, you know, we're going to try some different things, see what sticks on the wall and just continue with that as well as getting the toy room up and, you know, available for people and, and uh, make sure everything's there and, you know, all the reference you know, behind the scenes stuff that nobody sees. So, okay, thank you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Based on your experience with the, <laughs> the catastrophe in Cahos, oh, you had any comments real quick? How do you mean by comments? <laughs> <laughs> you've, you, you've had the experience of Losing a branch, uh, losing your main building. Right. right. I'm well, just not yeah. It. So it's a municipal library. So the city of Cohoes made the decision, not the board of library okay. trustees. So that's a slightly different scenario. Um, obviously, they have uh, slated to go and purchase another building, the former Cohoes Savings Bank, uh, what have you. And the decision again is the city's. The building's not owned by the board of trustees, so they didn't actually inform the board of trustees. <laughs> but anyway, um, so they've got a lot of work ahead of them. They did get a, a BID, I think is what it's called, a grant for $10 million. I went through the whole process. The library, I think, was submitted for $2.6 million of that, so it's kind of like the anchor store for redesigning yeah. downtown. Yeah. I'm not sure if they received the approval from the state yet. Um, they had different ways of purchasing the city, uh, all the ways they thought they could. Uh, everybody said no, so they've actually had to do a bond, I think, and taxes will raise, and everyone's going to hate the library, but uh, that's the nature of how it's not true. Um, Funding the library is non-controversial. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, if, well, yeah, people will use it. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, at this point, I, I don't know any more information than that, whether things have worked out for them or not. So anyway, but thank you. That's Appreciate all I Thank you so much. Thank You're you. welcome. Have thank a you. wonderful thank meeting. You, you know, you. Don't meet each other. It's nice you. Thanks. That brings to mind another possibility, too, was, um, you know, bonding for this project. Um, Again, timing on that is just what's that? that? Timing for that is is pretty far out there to get. I don't know. I don't know. You have to get voter approval, the right? City yeah. and the school district do these pretty sh short term bonds pretty quick. Well, well so yeah, when we looked at yeah. it, it was pretty complicated. <laughs> we met, you know, we met with the city yeah, about bonding and bonding. Yeah. I well, I just bring it up. I think bonding no, something we want to look at. Try and present all. Maybe for the replacement of the roof, that's something you want to consider as yeah. part of the uh, long-term yeah. replacement of the roof. I, I think that would make good sense to look at a a long-term plan that could include that and bonding for that. But, yeah, I think the idea would be to rebuild yeah, that, that roof that, altogether, yeah. which is a fairly expensive project. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So at this point, would the quickest fix for this be to take and use the treasury and then get the three and do the three weeks? And then, I mean, then you don't have to worry about opening it up partially and open up the whole thing. Yeah. What's what's the well, risk of that then? I think. Not having that money anymore. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I think, uh, Before we do yeah. it, I want to know what, we're, what our plans were for that money if we use it for this. I, I I would recommend going ahead with the repurposing at this point. Um, 
it's not guaranteed they're going to approve it. But I, and if we, I think if we do the repurposing of the, the grant for this roof here, shift it to that building over there. If that, if the state says can't do that, we still would have the Tinos as a backup plan if necessary. Or and if we are successful in getting that transferred over, we could then apply for another grant for the roof for here. Yeah. And I would suggest that we all be open to the possibility of a special meeting to move this along more timely. If we find one, we can't do it this way. Here's what's left. Let's not let it hang on an extra two or three weeks. Just, just before. Well, our next building yeah. committee meeting is in the middle. So it's in two weeks, which is a nice, it's it's nice it. part of how things are scheduled. But do you want us to make a motion though to give you the authority to go through with the request to repurpose? Yeah, we do we do need a so, resolution on that. How about that then? Because the stat grant has already been approved. I so move. Yeah. We haven't quite made the motion. I thought, I thought you were looking for the motion. Yeah, I, that sounded like a motion. <laughs> no, I meant the wording. I, I figure if I'm saying it's a motion, do we have a second, but could we fix the wording for this later? Yeah. How's that? Does that work for I everybody? Move that we that Paul um, attempt to transfer repurpose repurpose the grant with which grant Thank properly? You. What's the proper name of this grant? Uh, we'll the yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Read the minutes. That. So we have the motion. Do you want a second? Oh no, I I I moved. I, I made the motion. Didn't you second? No. Oh. Okay. Do it here. Do, do you want to make a specific motion? <sighs> we think we already have a motion. No, yeah, yeah. That's, that's okay. If you if you made if you have a more specific motion, go ahead. Well, I was going to do it later. Just I, the, we, so we need a motion. There's a motion on the table. Does anybody second it? I second the motion. Well, but we have to know what the motion is. The motion is to what? approve Paul to explore repurposing the grant. Repurpose the new grant money from Maine towards the emergency repairs at Lansing Bird. I, I second the motion. For the purpose of minutes, this grant has a number, so I can give you that. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Yeah. I, think I, will, I will follow up afterwards for but that. But I did bring two grants. <laughs> well, all those in favor. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, so that leads the question about the T bills. No, not yet. Separate topic. Not for later. Okay. That's if this doesn't go through. No, no, but I we need. She's going, we need a decision. Do we roll? Is it no, roll them? Do we roll them again in a week? Oh, is it on the agenda later? Okay, well, they they come due in a week. Yeah, so you need to talk about it. Pardon? Before getting the meeting, I guess. Of this meeting, yes. Yeah. And business. Okay, yeah. and I'm sorry, I should have brought it up with the finance committee. Yes. Meeting. And it would uh, have been a better way, but we'll yeah. do it new business for treasures week. Right. Okay. Um, the community engagement specialist. Oh, uh, yes, you have the description. Yes. I sent that out yeah. separately, Yes, it's but it's separate. also in your packet. So everybody knows it was um, it is the responsibility of the board to approve all new positions. Um, you have the information now what the job description is, and it's in our packet. We are going to have to make a motion to approve this position. Um, if any, I this, we made sure everyone got ahead. If any, hopefully, no one has any comments, so we can. Because it's already in the hands of civil service, so it's like now or never. Because if it's got to be pulled back, we got to do it now. Yeah. Paul, I'd okay. like to thank you for sending yeah. this to us. Yeah. I thought it was very robust. Okay. Um, thank and you. I think it captures exactly what we want from the position. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Um, okay. Um, we had sent a form over to civil service to get the thing started. So, I mean, we can still change it if anybody wants to see changes here. But I motion to um, approve maybe. this job description. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> yes, it was vetted by Smith. Too. 
I'm going to assume you were voting in a set for that. Yes. Okay. I didn't see you. Jump up and down. Anything. Thank you. All right. Code of conduct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because this other stuff came up, uh, I haven't really done a lot on this. Um, I'm in a meeting. I um, our current code of conduct. Um, well, this is this is concerns the taking pictures, filming in the library issue uh, that we ran into, which is first supposedly a First Amendment issue. Um, our code of conduct says that in order to do any filming or picture taking in the library, you have to have the director's. Um, permission beforehand. And then I had talked to the attorney about the issues surrounding this. Um, and she had mentioned, um, well, do you let other people film in the library? And I said, well, yes, we do. But they always have filled out permission forms. And that's part of our facilities use um, policy. policy. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, fairly recently, we had one gentleman who wanted to do some filming of um, some fashion things in the library um, briefly, and he filled out the facilities use um, form. So I go back, and then there were some issues of the need to film civil service employees in their jobs. This has apparently been upheld in a number or some cases. However, it can't be done in a in a place, or it can't be done when you're intruding on somebody else's privacy, like somebody checking out a particular book. Um, well, in most cases, almost all cases, our civil service employees are involved in activities that should not be filmed. So I go back. <clears throat> in my own mind and say, I think I like the way the code of conduct reads right now. I'm not recommending changing it at this point. If people want to change it, but I don't think it's a good idea for a library. Now, when I went through this before, you know, when I covered the idea of the library is not a public public space, it's a special public space, it's limited a limited public space. Public space. It's not like the park, you know, across the street. It's not like the street. Um, it's more like the courthouse. You can't go over and film anything you want in the courthouse. Um, can you elaborate on why you don't recommend updating our code of conduct? What's that? Can you can you elaborate on why you don't recommend updating the facilities use policy or the code of conduct? I just want to understand your rationale for that recommendation. Well, I prefer that people are required to get permission before they film or take pictures. Yes, we wouldn't. And that's what we wouldn't, said. we wouldn't change that. I thought I thought the idea was to make it more explicit and definitive. I think it's pretty explicit. It really does say you have to, you know, have permission to do that. Is there a specific that, language that you think would be better then? Um I don't know. I guess my only uh, my only issue my only issue with that is if someone just is does it cover written permission? Could you just verbally give someone permission? It doesn't specify. Okay. So would we want to specify? I, I didn't feel the need to, but if you all want to specify that let me get the thing here. I mean, like I said, I have you know, the, the, yeah. the case could be that someone comes in, a tour group comes in, they want to photograph uh, the uh, the same class window. Yeah. Okay, do we have to hand out permission slips or we say that the verbal authorization yeah. from the director at that time is sufficient? Um, do you want to give that kind of flexibility or you want to say, no, everyone went to a written thing and now everyone has to. I guess I'm just worried about the negative side of that thing. Someone wanted to do a quote unquote First Amendment audit that exposed our employees in the regular conducting of their business with the public. Would that be sufficient? 
It says, asking Paul for permission. Anyone who wishes to use cameras and or recording equipment must obtain advanced approval from the library director in order to protect library users who may be endangered or inconvenienced by having their photo or video image taken in the library. I be pertinent to have language in there about the director's discretion. Say, say he approves the school group but denies an individual who's interested in filming our employees. That's that's my only concern. I, I, I tend to take more into the weeds by the practical side, where we should be able to say that just because of the value of our collections and the annoyance it provides to other users, we should be able to say, no, you don't get clean lights. You don't get to plug those lights in to our building. You don't get flash photography because it annoys other. It, we should be able to limit. But I think, sure, I think if we get that specific, then we have the risk of, yeah. So I, I think keeping it broad in general is, is gives greater protection. You know, if you start getting the weeds of not this, but not this, but not this, but what about that? Yeah, it was, it was a funny thing because <laughs> at least it was to me. We had a gentleman come in yeah. and uh, <laughs> we looked upstairs on the cameras and he had a crock pot on, on the table. Well and it was plugged in. It was, a crock pot. It was plugged in and he was yeah. cooking a fish. He was cooking a fish in the library? Yes. 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 What kind of fish? So <laughs> I'm gonna add this to the code of conduct. There will be no cooking of fish in a crock pot in the library. That's another word. Sorry, am I like dreaming right now? I already did this. No, I'm not ready. Oh my God. I, I was just saying you can get maybe too specific. <laughs> anyway. Sorry, I, I would like, like to remember. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to offer the support of not making changes to be more specific as well. Right now, the broad language allows us to address things um, per condition without limiting very specific things or excluding very specific things. Um, it also, as Paul's agents, we also get verbal permission to extend if needed in the moment. So we don't require cumbersome forms or keeping track of that, uh, especially if it's considered after hours or weekends. Um, my thing is you're always going to want to make rules for the 95% and use your enforcement and backups for the five. In this case specifically, not being our first First Amendment audit, we've been dealing with this for years. The only reason it failed was because the police failed to follow through. Yeah. So I would like to foster support not to make any major changes as well. So thank you for... Up, for updating on that, and you, I do recall the piece about the police not uh, acting on our complaint, and they said that they would not act on our complaint without X. What was X? What did the police say they needed? The notice of trespass, which Paul did provide. So yeah, Paul did have that. It was, yeah, it was a specific yeah. order yeah. of trespass. I mean, no trespass. Right. So um, once we did that, then were they? Did they fall through with action that we requested? Well, he didn't come back. Yet. So, um, but I I drafted the the um, order. And it needs to be written. So we were ready. Um, yeah. To, I, to, I think to the Chris's of, question, does it need to be a written order? That's what I made. Yeah. It, does it, um, I mean, I, it would recommend the situation that. again. I'm just thinking: how does you, does one get a generic order of trespass, or does it have to be specific to a specific person to a specific event? This one was a particular for a particular person because I I had another person come in uh, the next day after the first incident who was also doing this First Amendment type sure. audit thing with his camera with his cell phone. And I, we talked to him first, and then I talked to him, I, I explained the limited public space issue, and I actually gave the, the whole description. And he was fine. I mean, you know, I say fine, relatively fine. I mean, it wasn't going to 
press this and he wasn't, you know, on some kind of a campaign really. Um, and so, you know, he stopped and he left. Um, so, but this person uh, who we did have a problem with, and I, when I talked to the mayor, she had said that this has been happening with the same person all over the region here. Um, and so uh, she had said that she was going to speak to the police chief who has not, re who has refused to return any of my calls. Okay. Anyway. That seems like a separate issue. Yeah. Virginia, do you mind if I ask you a quick question? Not at all. Um, have you and the other department heads um, talked about any sort of like inform informal policy, not something that we have on the books, just about um, the best ways to approach these situations? I think that's my real only concern with uh, this. Is these situations people being harass uh, people harass him. I'm sorry, I spoke over you. I apologize. I couldn't no, hear you. No words. Um, just in specifically First Amendment auditors coming and yes. attempting to provoke our staff. Yes. In fact, my employees all have training as onboarding. Um, it's a webinar. We've sent shared multiple resources. Um, we've had conversations with our employees. It's an ongoing thing, not just with First Amendment auditors, but anyone who tries to instigate or escalate with an employee directly. Um, there's. I'm pretty confident that all of our employees are capable of handling it. Um, even at the worst times, I think we handled it extremely well, considering the duration and frequency this one particular person was creating an issue. Um, so I think there's a lot of follow-up care after those incidents, but um, it is an ongoing and historical thing that we address. Thank you. I do appreciate really, I do appreciate hearing that. Um, yeah. That's really my only concern and why I would be interested in modifying the code of conduct in any way to further protect our employees. But um, if you and Paul um, feel that as it's written is sufficient, I agree with that. At this time, I do. Thank you so much, Virginia. Well, the, the facilities use agreement that your facility use policy that you have there is is that different from the one that's on the website? Because I'm not seeing anything on the website that says something um, about taking pictures. No, I don't think is that's it is. is that in the code of conduct of the facilities? Facility use. Okay. If, I think if, if it's not specific, it speaks to the idea that you know you have to fill out a form if you want to right. you know. Right, but I you know, I, I mean if I just you could have it on, included in, on the website. It should be aligned. Right. I thought that bit about the pictures was the last line of code of conduct. Oh, okay. That's why. That might be what he's reading is from that sheet, but not in the facilities. Because that's a whole, that's a form and that's a different kind of use. It's just the backup. Yeah, I mean, okay, that's, what we, that's what we use as a procedure, basically. Yeah, it's under code of conduct. Yeah. Yeah. Which is posted all over, so. Mm -hmm. And it's on the website. <laughs> okay. Are we are you good with that one? Is everyone good with? Back on with um, repurposing the 2024 public library construction. Yeah. yeah, now that was, um, we, we've already, you know, gone over and talked about that. I just needed um, final approval. Um, I have filled out and submitted the um, forms. Um, and that's to repurpose the window grant, which is 2023 grant, 2024 grant. Um, which was for the windows on the east side of the building to the HVAC um, system. And we should have a resolution. 
because you have to sign those assurances, which you okay. actually already did. But... And I'm trying to think, didn't we not do that last time? let you do that or do we have to well, approve the we, 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 yeah we sort of approved it informally informal okay yeah. so that's why it might be good to have a resolution okay so um i'll make the motion that we repurpose the windows the uhls dld construction grant previously used for the east side windows to the HVAC project. Second. Any discussion? Let's add the word main branch or downtown branch or something like that, but besides that, okay. Okay. Um, Anything else? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 I did just I was figuring you were watching, but just wasn't sure. Thank you. <laughs> Directors report. Oh yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> um probably covered a lot of things we already did. Um the I I did write up the um I didn't actually Virginia wrote up this stuff. On the safety committee Thank activity. You for Virginia credit. <laughs> well, I did. I appreciate did. that. We um, appreciate that. And I'm sure Virginia appreciates that. You know, we met uh, January 17th and uh, the 31st. And um, I don't know if you want me to review everything. <laughs> um, just uh, roughly, we. We did get the lighting in. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but the one in the back is like amazing. <laughs> yes, yes, Lights up the whole alley back. There. It's very bright. Which is what you want. Yeah. I mean, no, real. I think it was a good idea. Um, and then the one in Lansingburg is um, now covering that whole fr front part of the building, which was kind of, we had people kind of hanging out there. That's where the stairs are that go up to the second floor. And we have people hanging out there. I think that'll cut down on that activity. Um, we had a bunch of things with the fire extinguishers, including uh, putting more signs on them. Oh, you also see some signs that we had to put on the front door. Uh, people wanted, um, you know, it, it's slippery when it's wet, which it is. Um, and we have to do some more signs. We want to do a sign for upstairs on the landings, um, <clears throat> which is a um, <clears throat> handicap recovery area in case there's an emergency. Go to that landing. Don't use the elevator kind of thing. Um, I thought we, uh, I remember when we discussed it at last meeting, we need to also have two-way communication. Um, be very careful about yeah, how you how that's signed or indicated. There are there are very specific guidelines that would be required if okay. you have all that. Like an area of rescue, I know was yes, yeah, that we haven't done yet. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. Can I ask a question? This might not be in the correct timing, but I was just curious about the sign at the Lansingburg branch. I think we had talked about how changing. I was just curious if it was updated about it being closed until like through February. I was just curious if it's been updated. I think we mentioned it last year. Yeah, we need to do that. Um, I can address that if you want. See, I was under the assumption that um, the insurance company was going to cover this. Sure. And quick response, it said, yeah, it'd take us three weeks, you know. The, but <laughs> yeah, that's all off. Is it best to just say until yeah. further notice? I just think <laughs> I updating guess. the sign. I always hate those. Because, you know, right. What else are you going to say? Well, exactly. yeah, that is the case. Yeah. Um, Yes, we need to do that. Um, staff, of course, you met uh, Christiane, and uh, she probably thought she was getting away from building issues, but <laughs> I had good luck with that. <laughs> She's a Trojan. She knows. Yeah, she knows. Um, only February. Okay. 
Um, so I want to I want to add to you. We're doing a little change in this okay. area. Before you move on. Oh yes. Before you move on, you you want to do the honors? Yeah. We we have to oh, we approve do. Yes. her. We do. So, yeah. And the other one. Her hiring. We do. There were two people, right? Yeah. We've already yeah. done. We've done. Yeah. Lorraine. Last month. We've yeah. done Lorraine, and now we have. Wait, we've got. Do you want to? Okay. I make the motion that we approve the hiring of Christian Abo as a librarian too. I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we're doing a little change in this area. Um, we wanted to incorporate um, the head of circulation in this office. Um, the current circulation office is pretty much inadequate <laughs> what we're trying to do. Um, so that may make some changes here. Um, I'm anticipating um, the board meetings. We should hold those in the Troy room area um, going forward. I like the table in there, so why not? And in addition, some of the other meetings, like the building committee and so on, using the um, flag room upstairs. Already already arranged through July. Yeah, we Great. Thank you. You're welcome. We reserved it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's something you say the flag room? There's something Can I? Yeah. Which is here. Well, yeah, yeah, let's pick it up. People there? It was. In the flag room? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there room for the it's public in, uh, in the Troy room? Yeah. Same amount of room that's in here. So, yeah. No. Hope they have a public wing here. I suppose if we anticipate a whole crowd, oh, we can yeah. yeah. move yeah. somewhere else. Awesome. We'll occasionally get yeah. one or two people. Yeah, we'll always make room. Okay. Um, we have to. We don't have any other choice. To. If we go upstairs, you can't hear. It, the the echo is deafening. I I, I did attend a, a meeting up there, where the facilitator tried to dampen the sound, and the echo made it so hard to hear ends of sentences and what was going on. Um, and we know the bigger part of the room is, is impossible. We've tried that before. So the Troy room is pretty much the only room where you can have multiple voices and understand clearly what's being enunciated. So we don't have much choice. Now, if we have to go to the flag room for it, there's other ways that we can get around it too by putting in barriers. So to keep us separate, sort of separate from the rest of the people in that room. But let's try try room first and see what happens. Sounds great. And we don't have to actually reserve it all the time because it's commandeered. Um, all the construction stuff <laughs> we already discussed <laughs> ad nauseum. But um, yeah, that's all done. Paul, can I make a request that um, when you you're not going to just just for my own clarification. You're not going to seek an appeal without consulting with our attorney first, right? For the best possible path forward in terms of appealing the decision that Hanover unfortunately delivered on us. Yeah. Um, you could talk to Ellen first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I I just wanted some clarification on that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not right now. I'm still not sure the the road here. Um, I'd like to get. Um, some impressions from the roofers to see what they're saying. Okay. I, I have some um, you can go to the state. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I apologize. Please, uh, you can appeal to the state. Um, and like I said, I, I'm not sure I will talk to Ellen about some of the best ways to do this. Because um, I don't have much experience on that. Well, so I. I I think I would also support seeking legal counsel on how to approach this as well. Yeah. Since we don't have much experience on it, I think <clears throat> your input could be valuable. Yeah. I think there's some important questions that we need to ask the insurance carrier uh, how they how they do this here. I mean, did they before the flood, did they give us a list of criteria of what is insurable and what's not insurable? Before the flood, 
Did they do an inspection of the facility for the flood? Did they give us a report of any deficiencies they've noticed? Mm -hmm. So I think those are all excellent questions. Those are yeah. good questions. And, I, and then um, if they didn't give us any of those things before, and then on what basis do they then come and act the fact then and say, oh, now you're not covered? That yeah. That's, you know, they only see the after. They didn't see it before. Before it was probably in perfect condition. <laughs> Would we be willing to take uh, those up and send it to everybody, yeah, we, we especially him? The, uh, Thank you. We could use that. <laughs> I'll, I'll write these up. I'll send them up in the email. Yeah. Tomorrow morning. Like I said, I just got this this morning. I mean, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. and, and so I, I think getting legal counsel on this may help advise on the path forward. That's yes. one reason, too, I sent this out to everybody because, you know, something to think about here. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I'll... Thursday, I'll talk to Jay Wilson, see what is available. And Thursday, I can probably talk to the NOAA people because they do have a history as how you present, how they present, or when mm -hmm. something comes up for litigation, how they present that weather, weather record. And I'll ask what we have to ask, how we make the request. Okay. Send him that too. Mm -hmm. Thanks. As soon as I get it, it will be sent. No, well, I meant that you're doing that. Yeah. To keep that mm -hmm. in his. In, in, in order to yes. finish up here a little bit, um, we are currently uh, re examining our hotspot uh, program. Um, one of the things that happened, we, we had revised the method of circulation um, and the procedures, and it seemed to work pretty well. And then our carrier. Uh, Mobile Beacon suddenly was unable to shut these things off. Huh? You know, they go out for two weeks and we can shut them off. Right. So that, that encourages people to bring them back. And so they couldn't do that for several months. Mm -hmm. uh, Again? It's not a question you can answer, but I really want to know why. Like, Well, they were just incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we would like to do at this point, what we've come up with is to switch to uh, T-Mobile, um, who is going to be able to do that, and hopefully revise, do a little more revision on the procedures and that sort of thing. But that's that's all in the works um, at this point. Uh, can I ask a high level? At a high level, does it incur any greater cost to go through T-Mobile than it does? It or, does. Okay. Yep. Do we know roughly how much? No, not okay. yet. Okay. Uh, I don't know. That's this is part of the process. Yeah, I don't sure. know. I, I was just for my own understanding. Yep. What we're going to come up with um, in terms of cost because we have to get out of Mobile Beacon and get into something else. So, yeah. They're tough. Mobile yeah. Beacon. You tried before. No, good luck. Yeah. Are they just new hotspots or is it just the carrier? Are they brand new? You would buy new hotspots, or you can use those. We don't think so, but that's okay. see, but the cost for the hotspots is relatively low. That's not the problem. The cost is yeah. in the service, right? You know, in the uh, internet uh, provider. Um, if we're having trouble getting out of our contract with our current provider, that also might be worth talking to our attorney. Well, about. we're going to examine that. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not going to be a big problem. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to, to let you know what we're doing with that. And also, um, we as a staff are in the middle of the annual report. And um, one of the things, I don't have statistics for January, but in doing the annual report, um, and we'll cover that probably next meeting in March, um, it looks as if you know, our circulation statistics are, are beginning to um, come back to 2019. I always compare it to 2019 because it's the last day, last year, full year before the pandemic. So those circulation statistics are, are coming back to, um, you know, much closer to 2019. Our program statistics are, are really kind of fun. I mean, the attendance has very, large increase in, in attendance, which is really good, you know, um, gets more people involved, gets more people in the building, and, and it's it's been 
It's been very successful. Um, so those statistics are great. Um, I think our programming director has been pretty fantastic. Oh. But those... If any of the programs have been, been scheduled for Lansingburg, have any of them been shifted down here? Some that I've seen. Well, yeah, they can't, some, but we haven't really done a lot of shifting because we had anticipated this would be a much shorter period. So now, as of today and this morning, Thanks. we're doing whatever. Right. We're doing the, the changes. Plus, you're going to run into constrictions with space. space. Mm -hmm. You can only have so many okay. programs here. Yeah. Okay. Now, like meeting rooms, there's mm -hmm. no place yeah. in the building to have two programs at the same time. And that's all I got to say. And you wrote. Very well. Okay. So now we have all new business, and I know several of us have items that we want to share. So, should we start with the T bills? Yeah. So, um, our T bills are coming up for renewal. Um, and as discussed earlier, they may be needed. What's uh, that specific renewal date, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I know it's February. Joy, was, was it the 22nd? Yes, it's February 22nd. Thank you so much, Trick. You're welcome. Um, how long can we take the T-bill out for? What's the minimum? Well, we've got it? Um, figures for three months or six months. Is there anything shorter? Not that I know of. I, I would, <laughs> I don't Do you know, Carolyn, whether it's shorter, like a one month? Or, I think so. Yeah, I would, okay. I would think so. Um, and the, the yields are 5.28% for three months and 5.22 for six months. Um, I think it's anticipated that interest rates are going to go down, which is why you find the longer term being less than the, the shorter term. That's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting bet to make. Um, so also, I believe that we can take it out. We just might lose the interest. Is that right. correct? Um, and you don't have to reinvest the whole amount. You could choose to just reinvest part of it. If you want. So when, when are our bill, the bills come due on quick response and the roofer? I assume they're already due. Well, right? money-wise, I mean, you know, we'll have a large payment. Um, you know, March, we can use operating funds temporarily. I mean, if you want to invest for three months, that's still May. Mm -hmm. Um you know, you could take ninety two thousand out of operating. And the, the tax will we're gonna get what five hundred thousand or so in taxes. Yeah. In March. Yeah. Well in that case, it sounds like the smart play might be do roll them over for the three months, roll the whole thing over. Or we could do half for three months and half for six months. Can't see anything, but well, oh my God, that. With, uh, <laughs> it's too bad. If I'm looking here, I have to... 5.28 for it. three, I'd say put the whole thing in three months. Okay, the, the thing is, though, when you go to reinvest them, it might be lower than the, the rate 5.2. Um, yeah, it's possible that in May, the interest rate could be this, but I don't know. Oh. Listening today, well, I was said, I don't think they're, I don't think they're dropping interest yeah, rates. Yeah, I was moving fire trucks this morning. It didn't sound like the Fed was going to drop rates no. if they are until yeah. the close of the summer. That was Especially the last after today's here. inflation numbers. Yes. So yeah. So, so well, what would Dennis? Do? Stock market. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a I could ask him. Yeah. Oh, money's <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> I couldn't. Uh, like that. So it sounds like. Folks are leaning toward the three month term reinvestment of the, yeah. uh, the entire amount of three months. Yes. 
Okay. I'll move that. Okay. I know. You like to have a motion? I'll make it. Okay. Okay. okay, you make it in our second. Marie just made it, I thought, unless you want to read it specifically. Yes, we need specific. I'm no, I, I thought yes. that I, Pardon, I, Marie. I moved that we invest the entire amount for three more months. Second. The second. entire amount that is already invested in treasury bills? Yep. Yeah. And we can even come up with the exact amount. Um, yeah. It will all be in there. <laughs> um, okay. The second, we all I just wasn't <laughs> taken over yourself. I'm going to try it <laughs> Okay, so one thing to say. Um, I want to bring us. So <laughs> we, as a board, have committed to um, doing a sal salary survey every two years. So it, it is that time. Oh, did we vote? Oh, yeah, so we did. yeah, yeah, yeah. We voted. voted. Did you say yes for that? I would have. <laughs> well, you made the motion. I hope you did yes. say yes. Yes. Sorry. We I all we all agree. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have so, so. Um, it's, we should get going on that if we're going to do it because we'll yeah. need it in time to get to fall if we're going to change any salary schedules or anything here yep. um, before he starts his budgeting process. Yep. Just for my own clarification, that's a board exercise that we yes. can provide to. It used to be okay. staff, and the staff said no more. I can but understand that. We have now, um, we have agreed, formally agreed to do every other year a region, I call it a regional a full scale salary survey. Okay. So it's not just the usual um, schedule. For my, for my own understanding, um, yes. do we have an instrument that we can use to collect that information? Yes, um, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I think it's a question I'm very happy to ask people. But but, the two, you can always talk, but um, Carolyn did this two years ago and created the instrument and created the process and the procedures of doing it, and I'm hoping that Carolyn would be willing to do it again. Yeah, I mean, I'm willing to, to spearhead your head it, but um, when, when I did it last time, people helped out. Um, oh, yeah. So we kind of split up the, we, we tried to look for other libraries that are of similar size in similar locations um, and contact them. So some of them are local, but some of them, you know, we might go to Utica or someplace like that. And it just boils down to calling them. And we looked at, you know, Entry level positions, library ones, and um, you know, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I do have associates. Paying it. particular okay. attention to those libraries who have stolen our staff members. That's right. But those are in, mostly internal, except for Schenectady, and we get that in the Upper Hudson report too. So there's those Schenectady, are the there's Gilderland, there's East Greenbush, there's. Uh, <laughs> um, what's that place? Half so they lost there. Over and, Hedgy, and that's why they left. Yeah. But I think stolen is an interesting yeah. When is that due? Well, we'll need it in, in time for Paul to use it as the. So the I budget. would say budget. Right. And budgeting yeah, budget. in June. Is it June budget? We like yeah. To see. Well, that's when we Thank start you. to introduce it to the board. So in yeah, terms of. Okay. Yeah. But and it, sometimes, it, I mean, it's not that time consuming, but yeah, you, you yeah. need to make, sometimes you have to call them back a couple of times sure. before they answer. And sometimes you have to call the municipality. Sometimes you call the library. Sometimes you have to FOIL the information. Mm -hmm. It all depends on the library. Upper well, Hudson usually has a salary survey, but people don't okay, respond yes, to it. No, yes. Which would have made it much easier. And do we? No. no. So you can't <laughs> complain. Do we don't either. I know. But um, yes, uh, Upper Hudson because... doesn't collect a lot of this. There are some responses on it, though. There are. There yeah. is. And, I, and John and will share it. Yeah. 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 And the last one we did, I pulled the state stuff that I it was a higher end that will be able to list things for librarians and state service. So I have that. That takes a couple hours. I don't know whether you want me to. I don't know if who I'm wants to work on it with me, and then I can just email people and. I'd love to help you with that. That sounds great. So good. Oh, yeah. Do you do the state stuff out just for reference? So pretty much everything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to send out any people's interest. Right. Sounds good. Which library is they want. Okay. Thank, you. Mm -hmm. thank you for spearheading that effort. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, other new or old business from Mr. Butcher? Um, 
in addition to Paul's meeting with uh, Paul McDonald's office on the 23rd of February, uh, Natalie Lincoln from Paul Tonko's office will also be coming in here for a tour Ooh. at, uh, oops. Oh, is that her, that's, is that his chief of staff? That's his uh, chief of grants. Oh, okay. And she's coming in at nine o'clock for an energy upgrade and funding needs tour. Mm -hmm. I like the sound of that. She said she wrote the, the meeting invite title for that. So mm -hmm. she knows. Funding needs and I energy. wanted to say, um, Kirsten, that um, Paul Tonko's district does not include Lansing Ah, uh, that was well, a question. Yeah. That was a question I said that. Wow. Mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. Are you serious? Oh. Which one is uh, so who is the, the uh, Senator Elise uh, Stefanik? Um, I don't think yes, Gilbert is. Yes, I the somebody said right. something. Oh, yes, I said yes. yes. House Representative, Representative. What was the like, second? I didn't know that, Lori. Yeah, yeah. yeah. upgrades <laughs> slash funding needs. What was that name again? Natalie Lincoln. She's in Tonka's office. She was, she was here when we when Tonka was here last time for an event. Who will be uh, conducting that tour? <laughs> and when, when did you say that was? Friday. Oh, Friday? The 23rd. What time? Nine oh. o'clock. Same bit at nine o'clock. Yeah, so Friday. Busy day. day. Probably very busy. <laughs> it's now, for every day. So. Are you going to give them the whole scope of all the options and things we're looking at? Or um, are you going to be very specific again? Time we can talk about all the wonderful things we have and things we aspire to and some of our short-term and needs and uh, longer-term goals. Uh, uh, goals, I realize, is not a formal term. Aspirations may be more. Uh, maybe I should be specific, more specific. Other options, too, or are you going to be? Other options for? You're asking a very loaded question. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not so, sure what you're asking. Just ask the question. Because yeah. yeah. I remember the last conversation with this when Mr. Tonko was here, so. Options of, uh, on our future and facilities. I was going to focus on this building and uh, what this building's needs are, as we've been talking about them to date. I'm, you know, I'm not talking about um, other things that have not been. Uh, <clears throat> fleshed out or defined or developed or we don't have any cafes or rental spaces or um, Airbnbs or wedding venues or that's, um, that's technically it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would be beautiful. Yes. Oh, I see that. Or alternative space. Mm -hmm. um, you mean uh, uh, other buildings? I, I wouldn't know what to ask. I, I, the goal, the conversation we've had with uh, uh, Natalie started from a conversation about our HVAC system and uh, looking to get more funds for HVAC work. I think that's probably the main mm -hmm. focus. Well, and it started even before that when Tonko had toured. You know, I don't think it, it was uh, limited to HVAC at that time. But no, no, but it had certain limitations in and of itself. Okay. The roof, if the roof comes up, have it up the roof. And we're looking for funds for a roof replacement or cornice work or stone stabilization on the outside of the building, or et cetera. Thanks to your letting. Thanks for letting us know. Yeah. Okay, any other new business, old business? I, I, have, a, I have a thing for new okay. business. Um. Paul mentioned that the chief of police um, is not returning your calls. Oh, yeah. um, what is, have you thought about the best avenue to repair a relation with the police? Fortunately, we do need them. Well, yeah, I not too. I mean, it's if our last. I don't. I'm, I'm unaware of any other incident in since they came to address our First Amendment auditor. 
Um, yeah, I think it's and really I, I'd be uh, I'd be concerned about them showing up in the future and either not taking the staff's concerns seriously, not taking you seriously. So some something needs to be done to repair a relationship with them. Well, I'm not sure. I think part of the pro the major problem was uh, that they got tied up in this whole First Amendment issue, um, and I I don't I haven't lost particular confidence in them. Why haven't uh, they not answered your calls though, or returned your calls? What's you, that? you don't have concern that they have not returned your calls? Yeah, that that concerns me. Quite yeah, frankly. it is, and that's concern I expressed to the mayor and. Um, I had assumed that uh, she was going to follow up. Has she? One, one was his ask. Not so far. Not, when, when was she this? hasn't gotten back to me. Yeah. When When did you last communicate with her? I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. That's a significant amount of time. I think it might be worth following up on that. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I mean, I agree. There's <laughs> lots of following up to do here. <laughs> What we do every day. Why yeah. did that conversation? Was there a specific time that she might have been getting back to you? Oh, you would, you would, no, no, she didn't. Okay, give That's me a point. time. No, I, I guess you know, I gave her a little bit of uh, slack because they're new and you know that sort of thing. Okay. So you'll get back with her. Get yeah. back to her. Yeah. Okay. It's a continuing thing. <laughs> Sorry. To... It's not being ignored. <laughs> I assure you. Um. Any other? Anybody else have new or old business? Okay. When in? By the way, in lieu of the president's report and upper house report, what we didn't know that. Advocacy Day was a, I think, the most resounding success since COVID we had. The crowd wasn't quite as large as it has been in the past, but compared to last year's, which also happened in this, the almost dose, the snowstorm that did not occur, um, it was amazing. We did get to go to several different legislators. Uh, we met with a mostly with staff, but a couple actually showed. Most of them were very aware. They're, most of them are very much library supporters. Um, the case was made that the, the construction fund at 34 million was fine, but we needed more. And that state aid to systems still needed to be increased to what was legis legislatively um, mandated many, many years ago. Um, it was a traveling road show. People were very visited. Um, we'll see what happens. But who uh, who went from uh, the Upper Hudson Library District or Troy specifically, or both? From Troy specifically, it was Paul and myself. Paul did uh, John and um, Jake Ashby, and I went with everybody. And from Upper Hudson, it was Mary Fellows and Judith Wines and Tim Burke from staff. And there were two, uh, Joe Burke, who was the DA representative on the board. Myself, because I'm on that board too. Um, Arlene Way from Albany and Yvette Tarplick from Altamont. So there were a few of us to to show and nice. represent. Yeah, um, and there was a slew of other people, including people from Mohawk Valley, who showed up at the last one with uh, Mr. Breslin. Oh, very nice. So um, different libraries sent their representatives, and there was some very crowded rooms at times, like the good old days, which was really nice. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, uh, the foundation, our foundation, will be sending our check. They're making the continuing the arrangements with the community foundation of the greater capital region to make sure that the process is put in place. But that money shall be coming soon. That's the 36 and change that yes. we talked about last month. Yes, I did not write the number down. No, that's okay. And, um, I what <laughs> to the minutes. <laughs> And uh, I have made arrangements with the director of NILA, the New York Library Association, to talk with her next week about our membership in NILA and the new membership rules 
and how trustees are actually covered or not. She said they are. It, if you look at their um, promotional material, it's a little unclear to me. Um, and I will certainly take it to segue to see how staff's going to be covered too. Um, so that's the week after this that we'll get to talk to her. And hopefully, again, be, way before budget time, but it would be nice to know what's coming. As an aside to that, is there any way we can get some updated handbooks, physical copies? Oh, are they there? Yes, the trustee oh, handbook are over there. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They have arrived. Uh, Beautiful. Uh, Our husband is waiting <laughs> until DLD put the official copy up on their on up um, online, but since they didn't, uh, Tim has has apologized that he was actually giving them credit for doing that, and they hadn't. So he sent out the books. Right. So we have them here now. Amazing. It is truly amazing. And any so any last. I just kind of want to make note in the minutes that I feel like um, I'm just curious what comes of the police chief response, because I feel like the staff doesn't. They don't know if they can trust that the police are going to come here or or answer their calls in a timely matter. And I think like trust needs to be really established. I think I I'm still thinking about how the Albany Public Library director came and chatted with us and their connection with the police. And and I don't know, I just. I don't know if that's something that you need to chat with the staff about or just reinstilling that trust as well. But I, I also see that you yeah, might have to talk about it all the time. Um, I feel like right now, I don't really, as I said, I, I wasn't able to get a hold of the, the police chief. I don't, I'm not sure why. Uh, you call them and they say, we'll get back to you, and they don't. This has been over and over again. Um, that's why I called the mayor. Yeah. And uh, thank you for doing that. I did express our concern to the mayor. Um, I will get back to the mayor. I mean, it's yeah. she does answer the phone, thank yeah. goodness. That's good. Um, so I'll, yeah. I'll have to go through that particular um, avenue because I, I'm not getting through to the police department. Okay. Let me put it that way. Yeah. That's um, good. I'm not sure why. I don't know. They they get tied. They got tied up in this First Amendment thing, and I'm not sure why they did. Um, they said this was at the time that this around the time that this occurred. They said that they had gone and talked to some assistant district attorney over here, and you know, we. You know, couldn't do this, you couldn't do that. It was all bullshit. And that's like inspiring that. confidence in me, quite frankly. And, you know, they're talking at this point, my best avenue is going to be to go through the city and go through the mayor. Okay. And I will continue to do that. Okay. Thank but you. I don't know what the hell is the matter with the police department. <laughs> do we want, if you care, between now and the next meeting? Would you like to share it with us so we we, we feel a little bit better about this? I can, yeah. That would be great. Next meeting's a month away. I, I know. <laughs> We're worried. Grace, this is a short month okay. to well, be here. It's a short <laughs> no, no, it's a long one. The twenty nine days. Uh. Okay. <laughs> um, does anyone have any community feedback? Oh, uh, sorry. No, you go ahead. People want to know what's going on with Lansing Bird. Always. Yep. yep. Has some that been communicated out through channels I may not be aware of? Most recent updates, I just haven't seen anything from the friend on the internet. Um, the pictures up on the website. On the website. That's website. from what January seventeenth or something. I think. Okay. That's the last I saw. It might be worth too when a new sign is posted on the Lansing Bird door that just like an Instagram post or something is just mm -hmm. posted as well. I'm sure they the will. Picture but... The picture of the picture. The yes. picture of the picture. Just the a picture of the sign. Yeah. yeah they... These signs of things not to come. People who had contributed were asking questions and quite concerned. I, I, I couldn't, you know, give them a plan, you know, before we got this letter from the insurance company. I mean, I, so 
at this point, um, we'll make this public, you know, our circumstance. Well, so why not? That's also where maybe the donors come in. Yeah. <clears throat> of course, we did make it public. This is a public meeting. <laughs> yes. Well, right. we need something that's no a little watching this a wide <laughs> breath in this meeting. Re reaches out. For exactly. Yes. 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 So we have three. four views of this. So I, know. I know. It'll be we wide. We have a nice but not flat floor. No, we need to get this out. Um. What time's you? Oh, please. Talk to Ken. Oh, almost don't want to do that because God knows when I'll turn on me. You don't want to, you don't want to talk to Ken Crow? Wow, just even that little social media thing that somebody put up about free libraries generated some pretty big pushback. Did you see that? No. What, what is it? Uh, on social media, they put up something like when the big libraries yeah. closed, those, uh, we did. Oh, okay. Sorry. The, in the social media. Yeah. Like when the big libraries closed and the little libraries open and then, you know, and so or something. And then people were like, well, it's not, you know, and they're both free, I think, or something. And people just said, it's not free. It says it was quite the little. Yeah. Mm. So you can't be careful what you put up. <laughs> okay. Well, we think it's like, wow, I thought that was pretty innocuous <laughs> and a nice thing to put up. And then people mm -hmm. really kind of, yeah. those consequences. Like, wow. People, well, people are engaging, which is good. There you go. Yep. Yep. But to that domino effect, and you have yeah. to get all those angles. Um, I just wanted to mention I had done a webinar, um, and the people from other libraries were very enthusiastic about a cart that was fully equipped as a kitchen that could be used for demonstrations. Um, in, and in, um, I think it ran about $10,000. I don't know whether folks here are, are familiar with that, but I know we have staff that that connect in. Um, but they were just raving about this cart. It may have been a jerry cart. Hmm. May have been the name of it. If if you're not familiar with it, I can research it and come up with yeah, the I actual know. name. It's really programmatic. But it, yeah. Um, yeah. Who's weather? For like doing a program. Right. Yeah. And, it, you know, you can have water. And so it would be ideal for this. Carolyn yeah. and I had right. mentioned it. Um, My only concern would be the ventilation but, that we don't and, have in our library currently and then adding any sort of combustion to it. And then the whole library smells like whatever we're cooking. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm like, we got crock pot guys. So. Um, you but, can't cook, but we can. Yeah. But, and also, the, the price seems right for a grant, too. Okay. Hmm. So, which webinar? Who who presented it? it? Was, uh, I don't remember who presented it. It was on library sustainability. But, you know, it wasn't, per, it wasn't part of the webinar. It was just... Something someone mentioned. The library, you know, the library representatives who were present were just very enthusiastic about this particular. Is this a, the sustainability group then? Probably. Okay, because then I can. Just like on the sidewalk. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. sidewalk on the grill. Friends right. cook out. <laughs> yeah, you did. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know whether. Do people know about this? Oh, we, well, right, not hearing from okay. Let me know. One, one thing that might be interesting, and I'm, I'm just throwing this out, is that, um, you know, libraries get out of the bookmobile-ish, you know, business, and there are probably some laying around that are for sale. Sorry. Bookmobile, park it in the parking lot at Lansing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. just In the winter, idea. containers. What? Everybody's putting everything in containers now. Shipping containers, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Anyway. All right. Community All feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, uh, I hear nothing but great things about our programming, programming, program, and mm -hmm. um, what Chloe Whitaker has done has just turned this place around. Absolutely. And now I can't imagine what it's going to be like with double <laughs> stuff here yeah. and for Carol and for everyone else. This is going to be fun to watch. All righty. Um, public comment. Does anyone have any public comment today? I hear crickets. So, uh, that's unusual. Date and time of next meeting, which is March 12th, 2024. We are meeting in the Troy room. This mm -hmm. is a reminder. Um, finance at 5, 5.30 for regular meeting. Uh, I'll make any, any last 
comments, anything else before I call for adjournment? Okay, then let's call for an adjournment. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I have many. We just